Alabama is blessed with water resources. Peaceful brooks, meandering creeks, and majestic rivers crisscross the state. These waterways provided a transportation network for Native Americans traveling by canoe. But they presented impassable barriers to settlers who needed to move large loads by wagon. Hundreds of covered bridges were built to improve transportation. Constructed of timbers cut from the nearby countryside, these bridges were patterned after a style developed in New England around 1800. Heavy loads, floods, fires, and passing years have destroyed most of Alabama's covered bridges. Those persistent engineering marvels that still stand have become popular tourist attractions, giving visitors insight into the needs and hardships of our ancestors. With their rustic barn-like appearance, covered bridges provide picturesque setting for reflecting on life in the past. Covered bridges were built for horse-drawn transportation, but they served quite well for early automobiles. As loads became heavier and traffic busier, bridges of concrete and steel replaced the older wooden designs. These bridges were covered for no more romantic reason than to protect the large beams joined in triangular patterns to form a truss. These trusses allowed the bridge to support great weight over a long distance. The covering and sides also created a comforting atmosphere for horses that might get spooked if they got a good look at where they were. Covered bridges provided shelter for the weary storm-beaten travelers and hospitable locations for romantic rendezvous. They sometimes became the focus of community events and served as town meeting halls. Alabama's covered bridges have played an important role in the state's rich history. Each bridge has its own stories to tell. The Coldwater Bridge in Oxford is the oldest surviving covered bridge in Alabama. It was built in 1850 to span Coldwater Creek but was moved in 1990 to the Oxford City Park, where it rests over the spillway from Oxford Lake. Since the body of the bridge is positioned at ground level, the wooden ramps that originally led traffic up into the bridge are not required here. At its original location, two masonry pillars, one on each side of the creek, elevated the bridge. Remnants of an old dam and gristmill can be seen just upstream on Coldwater Creek. Constructed of hand-hewn pine timbers and a wooden shingle roof, the Coldwater Bridge aided travelers in the mountains of northeast Alabama until it was moved to a position of safety and honor. Now the bridge is enjoyed by visitors to Oxford City Park and can be seen by traffic rushing by on Interstate 20. With its long wooden approach ramps rotted away, the 115-foot Waldo Bridge almost appears to be poised in flight. Ox-drawn wagons brought huge timbers and stone here in the late 1850s for construction of the bridge. Well, they had to quarry the stone and get some stone masons to build the piers on it. And then um, some of the bridges were cut and laid out on a smooth avery and fitted together and numbered, and then they were taken to the site and put together. Located southeast of Talladega, on Highway 77. Waldo was a bustling community when this bridge was built. And hundreds of people crossed Talladega Creek here each day. 
Miners toiled in the nearby Riddles Hole gold mine, separating small gold deposits from the hard rock. And customers came from miles around to have their corn and wheat ground at Riddles Mill. The mill even served as the town hall. The old mill has been converted into a restaurant, providing weekend diners a pleasant location for viewing Alabama's second oldest covered bridge. Named for the Creek Indian word for mulberry trees, the village of Kaimulga, south of Childersburg, was a thriving community in 1861 when this bridge was built. Historians tell us that there were quite a few stores here in, in the early 1860s, and this covered bridge was put here as a means of being able to allow people to travel from the northern part of the county over into the southern part of the county and come to the, uh, the, the village here of Kaimuga. Restoration of the nearby 1864 grist mill required reconstruction of the dam. When the other dam was built on the bottom floor, they had great huge timbers in there. And on this one, we put in iron post and poured concrete instead of having those in there. So the only, really the major difference is that our flooring is of concrete instead of out of the wood boards. From behind the dam, water is routed under the mill where it rotates turbines that power the millstones. To my knowledge, this mill never had a wheel. It has always operated from water turbines. They are much more efficient. It takes less water to operate them, and you can do more work. As doors are opened on the submerged turbine, it rotates gears that turn the millstone. Corn is ground into corn meal between two huge stones imported from France. You have to keep the stones regulated for speed. Uh, as the stones turn, the longer they turn, the more heat generates, and you need to keep a Feel of the grain, make sure that it's not turning fast enough to overheat the grain because it destroys the flavor of the grain. You can do that by feeling of it, and I do it by smell. I smell of it. I can also tell by smelling of it, and uh, that's, I think, where the saying goes, keep your nose to the grindstone. Providing a unique look into the past, the old Kaimulga Mill and the covered bridge are open to the public every day. This 80-foot bridge had two homes before it came to rest on the campus of the University of West Alabama in Livingston. It was built in 1861 to span the Sukunarchi River. When a larger bridge was needed there in 1924, it was moved to Alamulki Creek, where it continued to serve until a log truck broke through the floor in 1958. During the Civil War, Confederate General Nathan Bedford Forrest led troops across this bridge en route to Mississippi. And it is said that the notorious horse thief Steve Renfro was executed at this bridge by hanging. Ironically, Renfro was serving as the local sheriff when he was apprehended. Oak pegs join pine timbers in this grand old bridge, which is topped by a wooden shingle roof. Local citizens mounted an effort to save the bridge, and it was moved to the university campus where it can be enjoyed by all. The Gilliland Bridge was the first of Alabama's covered bridges 
to be relocated and restored as a tourist attraction. In 1967, the bridge was moved from its original home on Gilliland Plantation in Reese City to Nakalula Falls Park in Gadsden, where it became a part of the Pioneer Village. Built in 1899 to span Big Wills Creek, this 44-foot bridge improved transportation between Etowah, Marshall, and DeKalb counties. Merchants from the three counties donated materials for the bridge in an effort to increase trade. At its original location, the bridge hosted several weddings, including one impromptu ceremony that occurred when an anxious couple just happened to meet their pastor at the bridge. Now resting adjacent to other 19th century buildings, the bridge allows visitors to walk back through time. Located in rural Lee County, this 75-foot bridge connected to the communities of Salem and Shotwell by providing a convenient crossing point on Wacoochee Creek. Long ago, Salem was a contender for the county seat of Lee County, but a vote led to Opelika becoming the center of county government. Through the years, the Salem-Shotwell Bridge has suffered damage from high water and rotting wood, but local citizens have united to save it. So many of them across the country are being destroyed by vandals or floods or whatever that uh, we feel like that this is a treasure that we want to protect. And then we found that it needed some work, as most of them do. And we're in the process of restoring, tearing out the rotten wood. We've had gone to a sawmill and gotten the right size wood and it's, it's been cured, so we're about ready to start on that part. Also, there was a flood in 92 that the waters came up and pushed on one of the piers, so that needs shoring up. We've got it jacked up now. The earliest historical reference to this bridge is dated 1900, but Auburn University architectural scholars say construction features may indicate it was built long before then. Oak pegs were used here instead of iron bolts, commonly used elsewhere by 1900. Only minutes off Highway 280, east of Opelika, the bridge is visited by curious travelers every day. At a length of 270 feet, the Clarkston Leg Bridge is the 33rd longest covered bridge in the world. It is named for Cullman County community and the man responsible for having it built. James Legg was a mail carrier for the Clarkston Post Office. In 1904, he donated the materials for a bridge to span this deep gorge cut by Crooked Creek and shorten his mail route. Construction of the bridge extended over a four-year period, and it was completed in 1908. Unfortunately for Leg, the Clarkston Post Office was closed in 1907, and he never got to use the bridge for his mail route. The bridge is no longer in service, but an adjacent concrete bridge affords a wonderful view of this treasure. Picnic tables and a nature trail here make this site along Cullman County Road 11 a popular location for outdoor events. Located six miles southwest of Alexander City, the Okachore Bridge connected two county seats, Rockford in Coosa County and Dadeville in Tallapoosa County. Construction of the 56-foot bridge began in 1915, and the total cost for materials and labor was $400. Before the bridge was built, traffic crossed Okachoy Creek at a nearby ford, where ruts worn into the rock 
by the wheels of horse-drawn wagons and buggies can still be seen today. A pool near the bridge has been used by local churches for baptism. People have gathered here dressed in their Sunday best for joyous ceremonies. The Okachoy Bridge is now under the care of the Coosa County Historical Society, which has developed a small park area here. Built in 1927, the Easley Bridge is the oldest surviving covered bridge in Blount County. But as covered bridges go, it is still quite young. The 95-foot bridge spans a small stream known as the Dub Branch. Located in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains, Blount County used to have 30 covered bridges, but now only three remain. We built, I think, six in the 1930s, which is unusual because by the turn of the century, most counties in Alabama had gone to metal or concrete or a combination of those two bridges and had stopped building covered bridges. And we, uh, well, simply because we're in uh, north central Alabama, which is hilly, we have a lot of swift streams with steep banks. We have a lot of abundant timber and, and stone to build, continue building those kind of bridges. And it was all we had known and it was the, the easiest answer to a transportation need and the most economical, and we just continue to build the covered bridges. People come from near and far for the Covered Bridge Festival held in Blount County each October. The county holds records for both the highest and the longest covered bridges in the South, and all three of the remaining bridges are still in use. The Nectar Covered Bridge, which spanned the Locust Fork of the Black Warrior River, burned in 1993. At 385 feet, it was the longest covered bridge in the South. This was a gathering place uh, for people, and it, uh, you know, it had so many memories, and, and uh, we still had baptizings down here by the bridge. Uh, and the kids still liked to come swimming. We had people, we had tourists from a lot of places that come and looked at the bridge. When the bridge burned, I guess it really affected a lot of people because uh, I could see from my kitchen window, uh, it burned like on Sunday. And uh, for the next two weeks, there was a steady stream of people just constantly coming and viewing the, what was left of it. And uh, it was just really sad, you know, it's just like they were mourning the loss of a person. For many years, people had crossed the Nectar Bridge to reach the Nectar Basket Factory where baskets are made of poplar wood using machinery and techniques which date back to the 1800s. We sell everything we make and we sell them all right here at the door. We don't do any shipping because we would have to make the price so much higher to hire people, you know, to ship out. So we don't do that and they come here and pick them up and uh, it makes it easier on them and us both. On an old lay machine like it peels it off in sheets of timber, and then we've got a clipper that clips them off the width that, you know, we need. And they're braided in, uh, you know, flat pieces. And then from there, they're carried over to the making block, and they're formed a basket and trimmed off the rough edges of it. And then from there, it's carried in the middle, and they put the wire handles on it. And that's all there is to it. When the Nectar Bridge burned, the title of longest covered bridge in the South fell to its younger sibling, the Swan Bridge. At 324 feet in length, the Swan Bridge rises 27 feet above the Locust Fork. A winding road leads traffic to a rock ledge where it enters the one lane bridge. Traffic is so heavy at times that you may have to wait your turn to cross. The breathtaking beauty here makes this a popular spot for sightseeing and picnics. Canoeists also frequent this location, 
when the waters of the Warrior River are high. The bridge bears the name of a family that owns a farm here. Through the years, the bridge has contributed to Blunt County life by allowing farmers to take their products to market and purchase supplies. The Swan Bridge is located one mile west of the Cleveland community and Highway 79. Rising 70 feet above a deep gorge cut by the Calvert Prong of the Warrior River, the Horton Mill Bridge is higher above water than any other covered bridge in the world. It is named for a grist mill that was founded by the Horton family in the 1800s. A Horton family descendant who helped build the bridge recalls that it took a 15-man crew around 18 months to complete it. They went out of the morning. Uh, about sunup, they went to work. And uh, they worked till 11.30. They ate lunch, took out 30 minutes, and went to work and worked till sundown. And uh, uh, every feller took a hold and uh, done his job. Uh, you usually worked around 10 hours, uh, or 11 maybe in the summertime. Then uh, you could go home and uh, eat them peas, cornbread, and milk, rest, and get at it tomorrow. It's a talent that they had, you see, that's gone now. Our knowledge or whatever. Uh, if you start out not looking for a feller to build you a wooden bridge, where would you go? All the bridges you have just seen are open to the public. While there are a few more covered bridges in Alabama, they either may not be readily accessible to the public, or they are more recently constructed interpretations of the historic covered bridge style. If you would like to visit any of the covered bridges you have seen here, you can find their locations on the official Alabama highway map published by the State Department of Transportation. 